you know you're in trouble when this is supposed to be your system seller. The 3DS ended up being a great console with a really deep library, but that was not the case at the start. The system was released on February 26th, 2011 in Japan and March 27th, 2011 in North America. The 3DS was the successor to the incredibly successful DS. The DS had a sort of mid-generation upgrade with the DSi, which added a front-facing camera, a back-facing camera, and an SD card slot for internal storage. The 3DS was essentially a substantial more powerful DSi with a stereoscopic 3D top screen. Conceptually, I actually really like the 3DS. The most iconic part of the DS was its pair of dual screens, so the 3DS experimenting with its top screen made sense thematically. I got my 3DS only a couple of months after launch and I remember being so excited for this thing. I have no idea why. Maybe it was the 3D screen, but it probably was just the hype of a new Nintendo console. This era was probably my peak Nintendo fanboy years, which kind of sucks because these early days of the 3DS were pretty rough. The system's launch library was notoriously lackluster. You take a look at this lineup and the first thing that comes to your mind is, who cares? The first game I got was one of the launch titles, Super Street Fighter 4 3D Edition, and I did have a good time with it. Having Street Fighter 4 on the go was really cool, especially since the game wasn't even on Nintendo's then current game console, the Wii. Once you get past the novelty of Street Fighter 4 being on a Nintendo handheld though, this game becomes a lot less impressive. Keep in mind, by the time this game came out, Capcom had already released Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition, the newest version of the game at the time with new characters and balance updates, so 3D Edition was already outdated by the time it even came out. And probably the worst part about the game is that the game's frame rate plummets if you turn on the 3D mode. It says a lot when the defining feature of the console and the thing that they market on the front of the game's box makes the game run worse. The third party stuff honestly wasn't too interesting. Japan did get a Professor Layton game, but for North America and Europe, it was slim pickings. Nintendo themselves released a few first party titles, Pilot Wings Resort, Nintendogs and Cats, and Steel Diver. Pilot Wings Resort actually made sense as a launch title because Pilot Wings was a launch title for the Super Nintendo in North America, and Pilot Wings 64 was a launch title for Nintendo's next console, the Nintendo 64 in North America as well. However, I don't think I've ever met a Pilot Wings fan in my life. I'm not saying they don't exist, obviously people do enjoy the franchise, but popularity wise, it's like an E-list Nintendo franchise. The Pilot Wings games have always been a showcase or a tech demo for the console that the game was released on. The original Pilot Wings showed off the Super Nintendo's Mode 7 sprite scaling and rotation, and Pilot Wings 64 showed off the 3D models of the N64. Pilot Wings Resort showed off the stereoscopic 3D screen on the 3DS, but the problem was that, one, the 3D effect on the 3DS really wasn't all that incredible, and two, you couldn't even see the 3D effect unless you saw it in person. In trailers and gameplay footage, Pilot Wings Resort just looked like a pretty basic flying sim game, and the graphics were honestly not that impressive. This doesn't look much better than a PSP game. Fortunately, Nintendo Nintendo did release a game from a far more prominent Nintendo franchise at the time, Nintendogs Plus Cats. And yeah, this game is definitely Nintendogs with some cats. Nintendogs was at one point a premier Nintendo IP. If you include all of the different versions, Nintendogs is the second best selling game on the Nintendo DS. Nintendo's best selling console of all time as of the time I'm writing this. But with Nintendogs Plus Cats on the 3DS, by the time this game came out, the Nintendogs craze had died down. I was a big fan of the original Nintendogs, but by the time Nintendogs Plus Cats came out I just just didn't care but then again that's probably because I got an actual living breathing dog instead of having to play with virtual pets Finally, there was a new IP, Steel Diver. It's a submarine simulator that started off as a tech demo for the DS that Nintendo showed off in 2004. Steel Diver, uh, I mean, Steel Diver isn't bad, it's just Steel Diver. None of the first party games were horrible, they just weren't enough to sell a console, especially at the Nintendo 3DS's original price of $249.99. Keep in mind, this price of about $250 was the same price price that the Nintendo Wii, Nintendo's then current home console launched at back in 2006. Speaking of the Wii, the Wii had already had its price cut, so the 3DS, which was a handheld, was even more expensive than the Wii, Nintendo's home console at the time. Obviously, inflation is a thing, but still, $250 was still a pretty hefty price tag for a handheld. Nintendo must have realized 
this too because only four months after the 3DS launched in North America, Nintendo announced that the 3DS would be getting an $80 price cut from $250 down to $170. That's a cut of nearly a third of the 3DS's original price, only a third of a year after its launch. Keep in mind, this is Nintendo. The same guys who have Switch launch games still at full price nearly 7 years later. A price cut this large and this soon after a console's launch was, and still is, insane. It's quite clear that Nintendo was desperate to get people to buy the 3DS after its first few relatively unimpressive months on the market. The 3DS did have a successful initial launch, but after all the hype died down, the 3DS fell off considerably. It managed to sell over 3 0.5 million copies in a little over its first month on the market, which is great, but in the following three months, it failed to sell even a single million units. It only sold about 700,000 units from April 2011 to the end of June 2011. Those wouldn't have been bad numbers if the console had been out for like six years, but this was right after launch. Fortunately, Nintendo putting their pride aside and slashing the price was a really good move for them, because the 3DS saw far better sales numbers for the rest of the year, ending off 2011 with a whopping 15 million units sold. Obviously, you probably felt bamboozled if you were an early adopter of the 3DS, 3DS like I was, but thankfully, Nintendo started the 3DS Ambassador program, which gave people who signed into the Nintendo eShop before August 12, 2011 EST 10 free NES games and 10 free exclusive Game Boy Advance games. This was a pretty nice way to reward people who hopped onto the 3DS train early before the price cut. The free NES games were cool, but the highlights were definitely the free GBA games, because these games were never made available for purchase on the 3DS eShop after the Ambassador Program cutoff date. In fact, no GBA games at all were put on the 3DS eShop after the Ambassador cutoff date. So it did make being a 3DS Ambassador feel somewhat special. I played Zelda Minish Cap, Metroid Fusion, and the original WarioWare for the first time on my 3DS, so I wasn't salty even after the price cut. The price cut was most likely a major factor in the 3DS's surge in popularity, but another was that the console actually had games as the year went on. By the end of 2011, several notable games were released, like remakes of Zelda Ocarina of Time and Star Fox 64, a new Mario Kart, and a new 3D Mario game, Super Mario 3D Land. 3D Land is probably not topping anyone's Mario tier list 3D or 2D, but it was still a fun game, and it was cool at the time to have a new 3D Mario platformer on a handheld. Before, we only had Super Mario 64 DS, which was a remake, and it didn't even have analog control because it was on the DS. Also, Nintendo launched the 3DS eShop. In 2011, there were a handful of cool titles like VVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVVV
kind of cool. And then after that, I just preferred having a better frame rate and not having my eyes strained. The 3D effect doesn't really add much to the experience or improve the gameplay in any substantial way. I also think that the 3D effect was particularly difficult to market because it's something that you can only experience in person. You can't really show off the 3DS's 3D features in TV commercials. And finally, the 3DS's library took forever to get good. Even though the 3DS the selection of games did get a lot better by the end of the year, I honestly don't think it was that spectacular or anything. Star Fox 64 3D and Ocarina of Time 3D are significant for sure, but they're remakes, you know? I'm a 3D land enjoyer, but it's probably the 3D Mario game that I think about the least. I'm also a Mario Kart 7 appreciator, but again, I wouldn't call it one of my favorite Mario Karts. I don't think the 3DS really hit its stride until the following year, 2012, which I'll talk about in a future video. In any case, I think 2011 was a much needed wake up call for Nintendo. They were riding high off of the success of the original DS and the Wii. So this rough start brought them back to reality and made them realize they actually had to try. Those early days of the 3DS were really painful, but there were some good things that came out of it, like the Nintendo Directs. The very first Nintendo Direct was on October 21st, 2011, and it gave us this fantastic meme. If you're an owner of Nintendo 3DS or just thinking of becoming one, if you're neither one yet, what's wrong with you? This was the year that Nintendo really started to care about their online presence. Heck, the oldest video that's up on Nintendo of America's YouTube channel is a video of people reacting to the 3DS. The 3DS's rough first few months were the growing pains that helped the console eventually thrive, and the lessons that Nintendo learned most likely helped return them to their status as a juggernaut in the gaming space. Thanks for watching y'all and have a great rest of your day.